What's up, y'all? Jay Miller here. I am glad to be back for the second episode of the reboot for the Productivity in Tech podcast. For those that don't know, the Productivity in Tech podcast is the show where I sit down with someone in tech that's doing awesome things and break down the the why and the and all the other stuff. We don't talk about the apps. We don't talk about the uh, the life hacks and things like that. We talk about real productivity, which is getting things accomplished and and mastering the thing that you are trying to do it goes in line with what it says in uh, productivity in text twitter cover photo it says be more productive and there's a reason why the more is the emphasized word there not the productive you see people tend to think too much about productivity in terms of being productive they tend to think oh i need you know the best productivity trick the productivity tip when honestly what we're trying to really do is not be more productive but we're trying to be more more of whatever it is that you're trying to be and that's something that i learned especially from listening to this guy that uh, i interviewed today his name is brett terpstra i'm sure you've heard of him if you're listening to this But if you haven't, Brett's been someone that I've looked up to ever since I got into the technology space, the programming space, the uh, productivity space even. Uh, Brett is a what I call mad scientist on the internet. Uh, And that just means that he's he's built a lot of things. And, you know, there's no rhyme or reason as to why he built what he built. He built it because he wanted to. He built it because he had a need and he he found a reason to fit that need uh, through code and we actually don't talk much about code in this episode in fact we're actually talking about that more side and and that is having more balance in life and I say balance uh, kind of in a punny way because we're actually talking about Brett's foray into yoga now I know some of you are like oh yoga oh and and then other people are like oh a guy doing yoga haha that's fine let's let's expel the myths and we talk about that a little bit first of all if you're a person in tech your physical health is so important and your mental health is also equally as important and that's something that brett breaks down very very well and as someone who has done yoga before if if you're trying to be macho about it yo yoga kicked my butt it kicked my butt every single time i've done it there's not been a yoga session that i've done where like I'm not sweating, like I'm not laying in my own pool of sweat at the bottom. And and Brett really talks about the the transition that he made going from barely being able to go for a walk or barely being able to shovel snow to to being able to do some of the uh, ground forest surfing poses uh, that you might see in his profile photo. But I'm going to jump right into the conversation. Here it is. Here's my chat with Brett Terpstra. Brett is the creator of Marked, Marked 2, EnviAlt, so many amazing things over at brettterfstra.com and uh, he is also the host of systematic and overtired on the esn network and am i missing anything brett i'm sure there's like a thousand other things that you do now um i'm handsome he's he's very handsome Uh, i think the last time we talked you were like 25 so (laughs) (laughs) man it has been a while (laughs) No, and yeah, for those that don't that haven't listened to the old podcast, Brett was, I would say my first, I would call him White Whale, which I know for him, that's probably awkward because he's like, I'm just Brett, but um, I've been following Brett, his podcast, his products for years now, and I 
I liked to have envisioned myself one day to be in a similar position that he is in now, where it is um, an independent developer creating applications, not necessarily to create applications that are profitable, but to create applications that are helpful uh, first to him and then to other people and yet somehow still make a living doing that. And so thank you for all of the apps that I have downloaded, purchased, licensed, and everything else through you. But we are not talking about any of that today. Instead, we are talking about something that uh, just following you in the last couple of years that you have been big on, which is your uh, hacking your body, uh, as we as we put it in the notes, instead of hacking your computer. And I'll let you go into detail about how you started getting into uh, the yoga scene uh, in the past few years. Okay. Um, well, I guess much like coding, I started yoga to solve a problem. I had gotten to a point where I was 260 pounds and as a six foot tall guy, that's a lot. Um, I was out of shape. I couldn't even shovel my own driveway in Minnesota without injuring myself. Um, and yoga was like, it looked like a, a really easy way to just start moving again. So combined with daily walks, I just started going to yoga classes with a friend of mine. And uh, it, it started progressing. Like I did everything the easy way in any yoga class, probably, at least in the ones I've been to, they always offer you like an easy way, a medium way, and a hard way to do every pose. Like you can always take it further. And I just started with the easy ways and it was really basic um for me at the time i was sweating and it was hard but over the last three years now um i can do things with my body that i never thought would be possible i've lost 70 pounds i'm active every day like it's been it's been quite the journey i, I can only imagine the physical differences that come with losing 70 pounds but uh, there's there's these two stigmas that it's great to see you shatter one is developers and like physical health um a lot of people outside of the tech space like to picture uh, especially indie developers as you know the person sitting in front of a computer desk eating doritos with like cans and cans of mountain dew like underneath you know the desk and uh, on top of that, the stigma around uh, men doing yoga. And it's even as someone like when I was in the Marine Corps, one of the, the most fun uh, exercise routines that we had was we actually brought in uh, a yogi to come and, and just give us like a quick like getting started with yoga session. And it literally kicked our butts. Like I think there wasn't like a Marine that was there that was just like not sore for the next few days and uh, break, kind of break those down. Like wh why, why do these stigmas even exist? And what was it like not only overcoming one, but overcoming the other? Well, so as far as the health thing goes, I, it's easy to assume that developers are fat when you're fat that they're out of shape when you're out of shape. But once you start looking, you realize a lot of indie developers are super health conscious. You Like uh, Daniel Jalcut, he's a runner, he's fit, uh, and he's prolific. So I guess I looked up uh, from my computer and realized that just because I'm a developer doesn't mean I have to sit in front of this machine for 14 hours a day and do nothing but gain weight. Um, I think, I still have that uh, kind of stereotype for gamers. I always think of gamers as surrounded by Mountain Dew and uh, not getting enough exercise, but I actually don't know any gamers. So that's probably my own stereotype. Um, but as far as like guys doing yoga, I, I just, I never understood. Like one of my favorite things is, is women. And there are a lot of women at yoga. So I, I, what's the, What's the hang up there? I don't know. Um, I actually, I, I'm, I like, I get along better with uh, women in general. So going to a place that had uh, 
more women than men was actually very comfortable for me. I fit in better. Uh, that never, I guess I never felt bad about that. Um, the guys that are in the yoga classes I take tend to be very strong. Um, like once you get into doing inversions and handstands, it's a, it, it's not a feminine pursuit or not like specifically exclusively a feminine pursuit. I think, I think you just have to see it from the inside before you realize how uh, not, how, how a man can fit into a yoga world. I can definitely see that. And, and I would think for the gamers too, one of the things that uh, we talk about, and, and I'm definitely not a gamer. Like I, I learned once I had a kid, like I am not a gamer. Like I prefer sleep over Mountain Dew any day of the week. Uh, but one of the things that I have noticed, especially in the news lately, is a is like a, a overuse of like SSRIs and different types of I guess focus medication. Uh, the the doping industry is big in gaming, except for it's not steroids; it's Adderall. And as someone who you know is on ADHD medication, like I, it took me. You know, like I think I've only I've only been on I've only been diagnosed for the last six months, but all six of those months have been so difficult just trying to get balanced and taking that back to the yoga side. Um, you've been one that that doesn't talk extremely openly about a lot of the issues that you've had. But but you do say like, hey, I've had you know, you've had to struggle with some mental health stuff. Has yoga helped with that at all or is that just a completely different journey no that was it was the the reason that i kept going back after my first week of yoga was at that point i was they had taken away my stimulant medications for adhd uh they meaning the clinic that i was going to at the time and i had no choice uh but to use exercise to find focus and I started only doing yoga in the mornings. At first I had tried it, like, let's see how it is in the morning and in the evening. If I do it in the morning, I get a couple hours of good focus just after doing an hour of yoga in the morning. Um, by, to, to compare that, if I go for a half hour walk, I get about a half hour of focus out of it. The exercise helps the ADHD, but the ratio of how much focus I get from an hour of doing something. Yoga has been the best that I've found. It's been good for my depression. It's been good for my ADHD. And now I'm back on my ADHD meds, but there's no part of me that wants to stop doing yoga at this point. And to me, that's, that's what's awesome about this. And, and I have, I haven't, made the commitment to, to start doing yoga yet. Um, a lot of that is just time. But one of the things that I've started doing more is like you said, taking those walks where if, if I take a 30 minute walk, I've discovered that my afternoons tend to be somewhat better. Um, and I, I think overall, this whole idea around like being physically in shape helps us to be mentally in shape which is something that you have to do as a developer like i've i've tried to write tests on like four hours of sleep and that is just the worst idea ever you start writing tests for the most uh, ridiculous things and i've started to value like okay hey i'm i'm gonna step away from the computer i'm gonna not do 14 hours in front of a screen instead i'm gonna do six and I'm going to take those other six hours to make sure that I'm enjoying my time. And I've learned that my actual productivity around my code is improved. Oh, yeah. And, and you don't have to spend two hours the next day trying to fix the convoluted mess you made. Absolutely. So I think that the one other thing that I really wanted to jump into was the, the mentality of, of getting into the swing of yoga. Like, we're very logic oriented people when it comes to doing the I guess like the programming side of things you know we think of things in terms of variables conditions arrays methods modules all of those different um, terms was it mentally easy 
to process yoga, thinking of the different poses, thinking of how you transition from one pose into another pose, having the background as a developer? That is a, it's a really good question. Um, I, I guess like my path to becoming a developer was probably atypical. Like I started programming to solve a single problem. I had something that I wanted my computer to do and there was no way to do it. So I learned how to code just enough to solve that problem. And then as I began to solve other problems, I began to see possibilities where I hadn't before began to use those tools to start creating new things. And I learned by messing up a lot. And I realized that that was actually, that's how I started yoga to solve a single problem. Uh, I, I never intended to become a yogi. Uh, it was a way to, in a, in a moment of struggle, a way to find uh, peace of mind. And as I got into it, the, the more I got adept at the, the beginner's tools, the more I began to see the possibilities. And, uh, you know, when you're first there, you're, you're following instructions. You're just, <laughs> without being able to predict what's next, you're just doing what, exactly what you're told to do, which is kind of the way it feels when you start programming. And then by the time, I would say in the last year, once a class starts, and we get past the initial warm up stuff, I can usually predict where the class is going to go based on the opening stretches that we're doing. Because there's a different sequence of warm ups that you would use for different apex poses. So if your apex pose is bird of paradise, where you are basically you have your, your leg, your knee over your shoulder and you're standing, uh, and then point your toe towards the ceiling there's a very specific set of hip openers and uh, calf lengthening that you do leading up to that pose. And once you learn those formulas, they can be pieced together in different ways. And there are some, uh, some stretches that might be more effective for one person than another. I I'm to a point now where I formulate classes in my head. I can do them on my own. I kind of want to become a teacher. I've never wanted to teach coding. But I do kind of want to become a yoga teacher. But it has been the same, like mentality-wise, it has been very similar to the way that I, I became a developer. So what, what does that path to, I guess, yoga instruction look like? Uh, if, you, if you say you wanted to become a teacher, like what is that? Is that a process? Can you just open up a studio and be like, hey, I'm going to start teaching people yoga? Or is it, is it a little bit more structured than that? There is certification. Uh, there's a 200 hour, I don't, I don't, I haven't fully explored what, what it would take, but I know there's a 200 hour requirement. And then you, you go through trainings by studios that offer certification. I don't know what the, like, I don't know if there's an accreditation process for these various um, uh, certif certifications, but the type of forest that I love to do is called, a type of forest, the type of yoga that I love to do is called forest. Uh, F-O-R-R-E-S-T. And the training program for it is ridiculous and hard and long. And uh, it's, I'm to a point with it that that's actually appealing to me instead of terrifying. Um, I, I know that to be a forest instructor, to be allowed to include forest in the title of your class, you have to get basically uh, direct permission in the form of certification from the inventor of forest yoga and a forest. So I think it depends on what kind of yoga you're doing, but there's definitely a process. So I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think here with like, I'm, I'm still coming at this of like, Hey, interested in yoga, but as a developer, <laughs> um, now I guess let's flip that around. If you were to become a yoga instructor, what would that mean for, brettterpstra.com there is not at least where i live there's not a lot of money in yoga instruction it would be something i did for fun on the side uh everything i do now is always going to be more profitable than teaching a yoga class i i could see all of your your applications getting new logos that are very uh calming <laughs> <laughs> with lotus flowers and yeah like, I thought this was a markdown interpreter. What? 
<laughs> it's a Zen Markdown interpreter. Nice. So, and and I think that's that's one of the reasons why I I love having people on the show that have multiple areas of interest because we we kind we kind of get like classified as one thing and usually one thing only. Oh, you're a developer. Oh, you're you know a coach. Oh, you're a yogi. Like, why can't you be more than one thing? Have you? dealt with any like do you have people like at the yoga studio in which you practice come to you and be like hey you do websites right i we don't have a lot of conversations about what we do outside of the studio and i never really thought about that before but i don't i think most people when i'm in the studio people think of me as a yogi and then i kind of like when i'm you know talking to other developers being able to surprise them and also be into yoga uh, because yeah, people, you get pigeonholed. They're, you need one primary focus. People need, need everyone to be one thing and, and they can know that they're more than that, but people kind of need a label to put on everything. So I guess it kind of makes sense that people would see you as say a developer first and then, Oh, and he also does yoga. I'm, I'm okay with that. So yoga is a thing that you do, not necessarily who you are. It, I, at this point, I honestly, I would say it's a part of who I am. I can't, okay. I can't currently imagine life without yoga. It is like just, even just for the calming effects, but also for physical strength. Yeah, I, it's become a part of who I am. I guess I wouldn't have said that a year or two ago. But I'm kind of all in at this point. That's awesome. So so the last question before we, we get to our after show is, as, as someone who's developed for years and as someone who has worked with uh, just different assortments of code and different projects of different scales, uh, we deal with burnout. Like burnout just happens. It, it's a thing that we can slow down, but ultimately at some point it will hit. And when it does, we have to kind of, there's there's a few ways to work through it, but we kind of have to work around it or through it or underneath it. We have to do something with it. Um, do you run into that problem with yoga? And uh, I guess it's kind of a two-part question. If, if not, what is the next progression like is there can you just one day just know everything about yoga yoga because i mean i know that some people believe that like so, oh this developer knows everything about python or everything about you know this language there are very few people in the world that know everything about one particular language um is that a possibility with yoga is it I, like the journey so if you google if you look on youtube for um forest gravity surfing you will see people doing some serious um, like Cirque du Soleil type of stuff. That's a goal. That's a distant goal of mine. And as long as I have that goal, all the work I do, it doesn't burn me out. Like I'm still striving for something. I have definitely at many points in my life burnt out on things. And I am one who is quick to leave behind something I feel burnt out on. Like I won't, I don't drag things on. Usually I tend to be one to light everything on fire and walk away and start something new. Um, I, I can see that happening with yoga or I can see it at least happening with the type of yoga that I do. I could see a point where I, I feel like I've plateaued and I want something new, but there's a lot of different types of yoga and a lot of different studios. And I feel like I could, I could blow things up and, and start again and still be a yogi. Although who knows, maybe, maybe I get into like CrossFit or something and become one of those people. That'll be the third episode that we do with Brad. The first one as a developer, the second one as a yogi, and the third one as a, a CrossFit instructor. <laughs> I, I have my doubts that that's going to happen. I, I tried doing CrossFit for like, I think a month. And it was while I was still in the military. And that was great because a lot of the CrossFit exercises are like less than 30 minutes. And when you've got a busy schedule, you're great. 
And then there was one that just said the entire, like the entire wad for that day was to walk on your hands a hundred yards. And I was just like, nope, I'm done. <laughs> Cause I, a hundred yards. I mean, if you fall down, you just have to get back on your hands and just keep walking. You literally have to go. But it's cumulative, not a hundred yards straight. That I could yeah. see possibly being okay. <laughs> yeah, I just like I li like I'm literally on a football field and I'm just like looking, and I look down and I look again. And I'm like I'm out. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, no, that's the, the the whole thing's a little crazy to me. I I like weights. I'm not a fan of cardio, which is bad for me. My my doctor yells at me for that. I I get uh, an elevated heart rate doing flow based yoga. But I'm not a person anymore who wants to go running. I tried it. I really did. I hate running. There was a book that I read by uh, Haruki Murakami, like my favorite, one of my favorite authors of all time, and uh, he's a marathon runner. And uh, it, the book is called "What I Talk About When I Talk About Running," and it's actually like an, a giant metaphor for his writing process and and how he labeled it. And he, he was like, you know. One day I just wanted to run on the hardest marathon course in Italy. And in my mind, I was just like, I don't think I'll ever just want to like program in the hardest program. Like, I don't want to write an assembly. Like, that's just not the easier it is, the better. I never understood that that path of like, let me do the hardest thing in the world just because it's hard and that I can do it like. I would just rather do a thousand of the easier things in the world. Maybe it's because I'm lazy. I don't know. I, I, I feel like in programming, there's a certain bent towards efficiency. And if there's a smarter way to do something, we have a, uh, a tendency to do that instead of looking for the harder way to do something. But I do know the personality type that says, yeah, but I did it in assembler. So... And one day I will see a video of Brett doing forest gravity surfing. So, I I do hope so. Like I can do a lot of inversion stuff right now, but that kind of like going from seated in a in a lotus all the way up to a handstand without ever standing up. That kind of yeah. uh, arm strength is still working myself there. Oh man, that's. I don't, I don't even know what to say to that other than, Brett, tell everybody how they can get in touch with you if they have some developer or yoga questions, because I'm out. <laughs> Happy to answer both. Um, you can find me at brettterpster.com and as TT Scoff on all of the uh, social medias. I hope you enjoyed the conversation and a special thanks to Brett for being a guest on the Productivity in Tech podcast. Uh, thank you again for listening. And if you enjoyed the show, uh, there was an after show that we did. Uh, I mentioned it a little bit in the conversation. But as always, with every podcast that we do, we try to do something special. And at the end of each show, our guest actually interviews me and starts you know, going down whatever quest of questions they may have for me. Now, Brett has his own podcast, so this one was a little fun. We, we sat down and had a great conversation. And if you want to hear that conversation, I need you to do one of a few things. Uh, one thing that you can do is you can go over to co-fi.com slash J and J media, all spelled out J-A-Y and J-A-Y media. And if you do that, that's a, a group of podcasts that I do with uh, one of my close friends, Jamie, and Pit is part of those. And what we're trying to do, what we're trying to put together is a way for people in tech to really get into podcasting, get into creating content to supplement the other content that they're creating, the other things that they're passionate about. And if you go over to that website, and the link is in the show notes, and you donate one week of hosting we pay for hosting every single month and we need help with that and one week is only a few dollars it's three dollars so if you give three dollars you only got to give it one time it's not a monthly thing uh if you do that you can choose to do it monthly if you want but if you do that then i will send you a link to the bonus feed which has the full conversation as well as the after show so that you can check that out the other thing that you can do is you can help grow the podcast by tweeting it out using the hashtag 
Pit Podcast. Now make sure you also add us, you know, with uh, at prod in tech, P R O D underscore in underscore tech. And if you do that, I will send you a private link to the feed as well. And this feed is good forever, so you only have to do it one time to gain access to all the after show feeds. And we're doing that because we really want to help grow PIDS network again. We had a large audience, and of course, when you take a year off, uh, that tends to dwindle a little bit. But by doing this, you're going to gain access to the special feed, uh, whether you want to support us financially or whether you want to just support us by telling someone else that would be great. The last thing that you can do is you can leave us a review on iTunes. Uh, I don't think you can leave a review on Spotify yet, but if you can, do it. Why not? If, wherever you want to leave a review, if you leave that review, whether it's good or bad, just take a screenshot of it or a link. send us a link to it and uh, send us a DM again, prod in tech, P-R-O-D underscore in underscore tech. And I will also send you a link to the after show feed. So I hope you enjoyed this conversation. I know I did. I'm not going to take up any more time. I hope that the rest of your week is fantastic. And I'm looking forward to the next conversation that we have. Oh, man, I've, it's already been recorded. It's, it's something that came on my radar in the last few weeks. And I'm so excited to bring it to everyone else's light and everyone else's pictures. So if... So that's going to do it for this week. I hope that we've been productive doing this. I'm Jay Miller for Productivity in Tech Podcast. I will see you later.